Hi, I'm Gail Sokol, and on today's show, we're opening the cookie jar, part four. Welcome to Baking Radio. Learn the art and science of baking with author, educator, and award-winning chef, Gail Sokol. Whether you've been baking your whole life, or you're brand new to the world of baking and you're looking to build your confidence and learn new skills in the kitchen, you're in the right place. This is Baking Radio. On today's show, we're continuing with our hands in the cookie jar, and this is our fourth part of our series uh, on cookies. So we are exploring the eight different categories of cookies. We are now on our fifth type of cookie, uh, which is the sheet cookie. And if you remember, just to quickly recap, cookies are categorized by how they're prepared and shaped for baking. So if you notice, the name is sheet cookie. This type of cookie is made very quickly, can be made in quantity. They're usually one of the least labor-intensive cookies since the batter is just spread out over a sheet pan. And the sheet pan has to have sides or usually in a rectangular pan or a square cake pan. It can even be done in a round pan. It can be done in any shape you want, but these are more of the traditional shapes. So sheet cookies can be as easy as one batter that you spread into the pan. Think brownies. Remember, I'm a brownie aficionado when we had a whole show on brownies. Um, Or sheet cookies can have a base of some sort, like a crumb crust that you bake off first, and then you put uh, some sort of a filling over that and bake it again. Think lemon bars. Uh, So there's all different types. You can even have caramel bars where there's a short sort of a short cake or a short uh, cookie uh, base first. You bake that off and then you pour caramelized uh, sugar and butter and all sorts of good stuff and nuts on there and bake it again. So when you remove these from the pan, you can cut them into shapes. Usually it's a square, triangle, or even diamonds, uh, which are just squares on the diagonal. You just cut them on the diagonal and they're, they're diagonals. So the first thing I want to tell you is uh, cookies like this, these sheet cookies can be made in quantity, like I said before, very easily. So now I want to give you a wonderful recipe for a double chocolate chip pecan blondie. So we've done a lot of, you know, brownie shows. So this is a little different. This is just going to kick it up a little bit. And the one thing you want to remember about sheet cookies, you don't want to over bake them. And I have some experience with this because I have done my share of overbaking, not only brownies, but any type of sheet cookie. And I've had many complaints, mostly from my family. So you want to make sure you don't overbake them. It can be very easy to do so. So to begin with these blondies, they're going to make 24 or two dozen. You're going to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And remember, you're going to, you've got to start with some sort of a sheet pan. In this case, I'm going to start with a rectangular pan, a typical pan that you can buy in any store, 13 by 9 by 2. So 13 inches long, 9 inches wide, 2 inches deep. That's a typical, it's also known as a brownie pan, uh, but it's rectangular in size. And you want to spray it with nonstick cooking spray. Then this is my trick. I take some aluminum foil and I line the pan and I make sure that that foil hangs over two sides of the pan, usually the two longer sides. Uh, It could be over the two shorter sides as well. Whatever you want to do, just make sure you have some overhang of foil because this is going to help you get that giant sheet of cookie out uh, after baking. So you're going to spray that foil. You're going to line it into the greased sheet pan, okay, form it into that sheet pan, and then spray the foil again with nonstick cooking spray and go over it with your hands. Some people don't do this and areas will stick. So make sure you get your hands a little greasy, get into the nooks and crannies and the corners and the sides of that pan. It really does make a difference. And now again, what do we do? We always get our dry ingredients in a bowl and we whisk them. Here goes. One and a half cups of all-purpose flour, half a cup of whole wheat flour, or you could also use white whole wheat flour, which is a lighter 
uh, less weedy tasting flour, and it's really, really fabulous. I use it almost exclusively, but whole wheat flour gives a nice nutty flavor to these. One teaspoon of baking powder, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of baking soda. So you're going to whisk all those dry ingredients up in a medium-sized bowl, set them aside. The next thing you're going to do is take a large saucepan and you're going to melt 10 tablespoons of unsalted butter. And that would be one stick of butter, which is eight tablespoons, and then cut two tablespoons off another stick. So it's one and a quarter sticks of butter, unsalted. You're going to melt that over low heat, remove that saucepan from the heat and just save it aside. Next, you're going to add two cups of packed brown sugar. Blondies tend to use brown sugar because it has that molasses in it, gives it sort of a butterscotchy flavor. You're going to add two cups of packed brown sugar to the butter. And I like the dark brown sugar. If you don't have it, again, light brown sugar works quite well. And you're going to whisk to blend. And it's going to be sort of sandy looking because you have the butter and the sugar in there. And then you're going to add two eggs, two large eggs, and you're going to add two teaspoons of vanilla extract. So, so far, what have you got? You got a bowl of dry ingredients and you have a saucepan of butter, sugar, eggs, and vanilla. All right. So now all you have to do is put them together. You want to guess which method this is? This is the one bowl method. All right. Really? The one bowl method. Begin to identify what method you're dealing with. So you're going to pour the butter mixture with your eggs and your vanilla into the flour mixture, and you're going to blend it well using a rubber spatula. Try not to use your whisk because your whisk is just going to get really, really um, bogged down in batter, and then you're going to have to clean it off. So it's going to be a pain. So definitely use a rubber spatula. I know this because I've done it. And mix all the ingredients really well. Spread the batter into your prepared pan. Remember that 13 by 9 by 2 inch pan with the aluminum foil. And spread it out real even, even into the edges. Use an offset spatula if you have to. And make sure it's evenly spread. That makes a difference. You don't want hills on one side and almost nothing on the other side. Make it even. Now you're going to take half a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips. And it can be any type you want. It can be very, you know, fancy schmancy chocolate chips or just your everyday uh, you know, store-bought ones, that's fine. And you can get some really fancy schmancy ones in the grocery store now. So you're going to spread half a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips and half a cup of white chocolate chips all over your batter. And then one cup of chopped pecans. You're going to sprinkle those over the entire top of the batter. And then you're going to bake your blondies uh, in your 350-degree oven until a sharp knife inserted into the center comes out with only a few moist crumbs. That would be about 25 minutes. Again, don't overbake. Put this in the middle rack of your oven. Do not open your oven door because I know you want your blondies, but don't open your oven midway through baking. It will, will really disturb the baking process because it'll lower the heat of your oven. All right, so you can look through your window if you have it. But again, don't overbake them. 25 minutes and stick that knife in. It's not going to come out 100% clean, but it shouldn't come out you know, like really gooey. It should come out just with a few moist crumbs, but those crumbs should be baked. Let it set up. Don't cut into it yet. Cool it in the pan. Once it's completely cooled, I refrigerate them. I just refrigerate them for maybe an hour or two, sometimes overnight. And then the next day, you know, the handles that I made you sort of create with that foil. I take each side of that foil and gently cut around the pan and lift it up so that the entire pan of blondies comes up and I put it on a cutting board. And this is where I take a big chef's knife and cut squares or triangles or whatever shape you want. And they will come out perfectly shaped because they're cool and chilled. If you don't wait and you want warm blondies, that's okay, but they're not going to be perfect. All right, they're going to be sort of messy and fall apart on the ends, and that, that's fine. They taste delicious. But you can also take these chilled ones and pop them in the microwave and get that same just out of the oven uh, consistency and texture. So I always like that perfect look when I serve them to people. And there you have it. That's your blondies. All right, so that was our sheet cookie recipe. Now we're going to move on 
where we always got another category of cookie coming up. And this is our sixth cookie. This is known as the rolled cookie. Rolled cookies tend to be made from stiff doughs, and they're usually rolled out with a rolling pin onto a work surface that's been floured because otherwise uh, the, the dough's going to stick. And usually you use cookie cutters here. Think of your sugar cookie. Uh, this is a very typical rolled cookie recipe, um, your, your sugar cookie. Be aware, though, that after mixing, the dough is going to be very soft. You're going to have to chill it. Guarantee it. Wrap it in plastic wrap. You can leave it in the bowl if you want to. Sometimes I just take that dough out of the bowl, put it directly on a piece of plastic wrap, wrap it up like it's a baby going in for a nap, and chill it in the refrigerator to allow that the butter, the fat in the dough to firm up. Uh, and this will make rolling out the dough that much easier. And flour is very necessary here. If you like a crisper cookie or a thicker or softer cookie, this is the time to control exactly how you want them is when you roll them out. So the thinner you roll them out, the crisper they're going to be. So you might want to roll them out one eighth of an inch thick um, and be sure to bake them for a little longer just until they're light brown on the ends. You don't want to burn them. A thinner cookie makes a crisper cookie. Remember that. And if it's thicker, like a quarter of an inch thick, this will be a softer cookie. Uh, and then you'll bake them just until they're barely done. So again, how long you bake them and how deep or thick the batter is when it goes into, or the dough is when it goes into the oven will really make a difference. All right. So here's a lovely recipe for a very delicate sugar cookie that I have used for years. So this is a chocolate sugar cookie. I thought I'd be a little different. They make about four dozen, about 48 cookies, but it depends again on the size. If you cut them super big, they're going to make less. So what you're going to do is, again, you're going to whisk all your dry ingredients in one bowl, and here they go. Dry ingredients. Two cups of all-purpose flour, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and a half a cup of Dutch processed cocoa powder. Now, remember, Dutch process is not your normal uh, natural cocoa powder. Dutch process says it on there. It's usually cocoa powder that's had the acidity removed, um, and it's treated um, with an alkali, and it has the acidity removed, so it will, will not react with baking soda. And you'll see there is no baking soda in this. It just gives a nice, dark, beautiful, rich color and uh, taste to your cookie. You can find it in most stores. So you have your dry ingredients. Now you're gonna set them aside after they're whisked. In the bowl of an electric mixer, you're gonna take one stick or half a cup of unsalted butter that's been softened and four tablespoons or a quarter of a cup of vegetable shortening. All right, that's a little different than butter. Vegetable shortening. If you don't want to use vegetable shortening, just add an extra four tablespoons of butter uh, to this and it'll be fine. Uh, they may spread a little bit more, but the flavor will be fine. So you're going to cream that on medium speed with that paddle attachment with one cup of granulated sugar. And again, that granulated sugar is going to act like sandpaper and sort of push against that fat and add a little bit of air to it but here, because it's a cookie dough, you don't want to add too much air. And you will beat this until it's a little light and fluffy. And you'll see the butter will turn white. And that's how you know there's enough air in there. It should take about three minutes or so. Next, you're going to add on low speed two eggs, one at a time. Remember, be patient. Beat after each addition of those eggs and scrape down the sides of the bowl with a rubber spatula occasionally. But shut off your machine before you do that. On low speed, you're going to add a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, and you're going to add your dry ingredients that you whisked to together you know, earlier, and it's going to form a smooth dough. Make sure everything is mixed. If you have cocoa powder in your dough, very often it's streaky. So make sure you take your hands afterwards, remove your paddle attachment, and actually go in that bowl, that mixing bowl, and actually move the dough around until everything is combined. No flour should be showing, or else your cookies will look like streaks, and that is not pretty. Next, you're going to divide the dough into two pieces. You're going to flatten each one and wrap each one in plastic wrap. 
and you're going to refrigerate them overnight or at least three hours. And if you're in a real hurry for cookies, you can throw them in the freezer. Just make sure they don't freeze, um, you know, super, super hard or you won't be able to roll them out. So when you're ready for baking, you're going to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. You're going to line like three baking sheets with parchment paper. If you don't have three baking sheets, don't worry. You'll just bake them over and over on the same uh, baking sheet with parchment paper that the previous batch came out on. Don't worry about it. Next, you're going to take each disc. So I would take one disc out at a time. Uh, If it's too hard, you might want to let it sit until it becomes a little bit softer, but not too soft. You're going to flour a work surface and you're going to flour your disc and you're going to flour your rolling pin and you're going to roll it out uh, to a quarter of an inch thickness. And then with a pastry brush, I like to brush off any excess flour so it doesn't look streaky. And then you're going to cut into any shapes you want using a cookie cutter. The easiest way to get the cookies not to change shape, sometimes you know that you make a beautiful cookie and then between the trap, the trip between the work surface and the sheet pan, the cookie gets screwed up. So picture a gingerbread cookie, for instance, and the little leg gets chopped off of the gingerbread boy on its way to the sheet pan. You don't want that to happen. So this is my trick. Take an offset spatula, uh, one that you might help you get cookies off a sheet pan, and just gently lift under that cookie on the work surface that you rolled it out on, and then just transfer to your prepared sheet pan. Leave a space between each cookie and bake them when you're ready for 12 to 14 minutes until they get lightly brown. And again, these are chocolate. Heads up, when something is chocolate, it can be very hard to tell if it's brown or not. Chocolate tends to burn. So don't overbake these 12 to 14 minutes and then cool them completely. And you can remove them with an offset spatula and you can frost them, do whatever you want with them but continue to bake them off until all your dough is done, all right? You can even freeze this dough. You can even date it, label it the day you made that dough and leave it in the freezer until, let's say, the grandkids come over and you want to make cookies and then you can thaw it out or friends come over to make cookies for the holidays or whatever, whatever you want to do. Uh, It's a very versatile dough. Sometimes these two types of cookies are so simple. So the sheet cookie and the rolled cookie are very simple, but they can easily be dressed up for a beautiful, beautiful occasion. And it's really like taking that little black dress and dressing it up to the next level. Um, Sheet cookies like brownies, for instance, not necessarily the blondies because they're pretty, um, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty blinged out with the chips and the nuts. So I wouldn't do too much more with them. But brownies, for instance, can be glazed with ganache. We've talked about ganache before. You know, you Uh, Bring some heavy cream to a simmer on the stove. You add some chocolate off the stove uh, into it and let it melt and pour it over your brownies. Or even a simple buttercream. You take some uh, softened butter, add some uh, confectioner sugar to it with a little vanilla, um, and you have a beautiful, simple frosting. If you add some cocoa powder to it or melted chocolate, you have a chocolate buttercream. That's a simple buttercream. You could do that as well. So, rolled cookies can be decorated with a simple glaze of confectioner sugar and milk, or even a little cream, or even just a little bit of water. Um, And you can smear a little glaze or frosting on the cookie and then sort of spread it around. And if you want to make eyes or if you want to make a mouth or different colors, you can take different bowls of this simple frosting and uh, color, you know, use different food colorings and make whatever you want. Um, usually if you want the cookie frosting, not to get all gloppy, if you put one cookie on top of the other, um, you would do something like Royal icing, which is made with meringue powder. Um, and that's a stiff icing and that's used to frost like gingerbread houses so that they keep for almost forever. Uh, I think I have a gingerbread house, believe it or not, in my basement since 2001. I really, and it's in very good shape. So I made that with a gingerbread cookie dough, and I also used royal icing. So it does last forever, but it's also delicious. So on our next show, we're going to explore the last two types of cookies, piped cookies and wafer cookies. So if you haven't picked up a copy of my most recent book, Baking with Success, it's available on Amazon and in bookstores worldwide. If you have any questions, 
Head on over to bakingradio.com and leave me a message. I would love to answer some of your questions on air. See you next time.